A Wild's new experimental aircraft will demonstrate a new method of flight control without any external moving parts. Titled the X-65 under the Crane program, this new type of aircraft can be fully controlled by utilizing jets of pressurized air. The demonstrator is no small feat, and it measures in at over 30 foot wingspan at 7,000 pounds. But is this control system truly an advantage? As of right now, aircraft need many external moving parts for control around their three axes. Elevators for vertical direction or pitch, ailerons for roll or rotation, and rudder for yaw control so that the aircraft can point left or right. Furthermore, there can be additional systems, such as slats, which can increase lift at low speeds. These configurations can also vary, so there is no real universal system for every type of aircraft. One prime example of this is probably the B-2, or the modern flying wing. Without rear stabilizers, the plane would rotate around its yaw axis. So it's controlled with a differential drag. Increasing drag on one side with split rudders would make the aircraft yaw in one direction. This fly-by-wire system would also interpret pilot commands and then control the aircraft. There is also a GLAS system, which is completely automated and independent from pilot control. This would eliminate dangerous oscillations in flight path and control the wedge-shaped flap in the middle of the trailing edge. In other words, the GLAS can minimize turbulence and enhance the stability of the aircraft. But it's a reactive system, so it's limited and it does not completely eliminate turbulence. As a side note, there are a lot of unverified claims about the B-2. One of them being its ability to ionize air to reduce drag. But this would require a very complex material or power source. Nevertheless, there are some publicly known research projects, including Drift, which are looking at utilizing plasma to change the aerodynamics of the craft. But this is a pretty advanced idea, and something maybe we'll get into a different video. As of right now, there are publicly known ways to actually reduce turbulence and increase stability. One of them is through a Doppler LiDAR, and this sensor would actually preview turbulence or gust at short range in front of the aircraft. The other way is to actually mount a probe on the front of the craft which can measure differential air pressure. This would give the system one tenth of a second to make corrections in real time. The probe would send data to an algorithm which would automatically adjust the flight control system to generate a force cancelling response. The company Turbulent Solutions is already claiming that it's flight testing a system which can detect and neutralize air turbulence, perhaps reducing the forces felt by passengers up to 80% and even reducing fuel burn by up to 10%. There's definitely a lot of research going into both techniques, but the key here is to detect clean air turbulence, where there's an absence of moisture and a turbulent movement of air. Combined with an algorithm, a wider predictive analysis of turbulence would definitely make the aircraft more stable. Now, this is probably not going to be some universal solution for every type of aircraft because there are quite a few factors to consider, such as wing loading or area of the wing compared to overall mass and even wing flexing. We also know that there's positive stability, which helps automate position after turbulence is over. So we know that computer systems can help stabilize aircraft, but what I find interesting about all this is that now we have an X-65 plane which is utilizing jet streams of air to control it. And that's very fascinating because maybe it won't be able to perform to a craft which has rudders, ailerons, and elevators, but maybe it could perform to a capability where it could eliminate turbulence. What we know so far is that DARPA is going to test a modular design and they're gonna build the X-55 so that it can be used in extended testing. They don't have quite the confidence in just utilizing active flow control technology. So they will incorporate some flaps and rudders on the craft. Like stated before, there are a lot of different factors to include in here, such as the wingspan and overall mass. So it's hard to say whether or not this is a scalable technology. I'm a little bit skeptical on this being scaled to a 787 or an A380. But what's interesting is what DARPA is not really saying, and maybe this type of system could be utilized for turbulence control. There has also been a different project which has looked into using jet-propelled air for controlling aircraft. The Magma drone utilizes air from the engine and blows it supersonically through the traveling edge of the wing to provide control. 
It also utilized fluidic thrust vectoring, or air to deflect the exhaust. But there are a lot of questions still remaining about this type of control system. Can it be scaled up to something like a commercial airliner? Or can it be utilized in a hybrid system to eliminate turbulence? One could consider the Magma to be a predecessor to the X-55 because it is considerably smaller. So it is definitely interesting to see this technology scale up considerably. More importantly, I would like to know what you think about all these developments. So please leave a comment, like the video if you enjoyed it, and also make sure to subscribe to my channel.